Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for a bit earlier lunch than usual. We are excited to bring you the fourth episode in our series of Culinary Diplomacy. I'm Sarah Sibley, the Vice President for Citizen Diplomacy at World Boston, and I welcome you to today's episode, Culinary Diplomacy Venezuela. And welcome back to our speakers, Arturo Riera and his wife, Yahaira Echevarria. We are so grateful to do a second event with you. And thank you again for the music diplomacy opportunity last week. They're actually just rebooting their internet right now. So they'll join us in just a couple minutes as we do the introduction. As you may know, World Boston is an independent, nonpartisan, nonprofit organization with the mission of fostering international engagement and global cooperation. That mission is particularly important during this truly global time of a pandemic, even as we practice social distancing. So even though we're at home, maybe especially while we're at home, we strongly believe that while programs may change, our mission persists. Today's event is part of our new series called International Exchange in a Time of Isolation, which is designed as part of our ongoing citizen diplomacy work and focuses on people-to-people -people contact in the human face of the international dynamics shaping all of our lives. We'll have more info about upcoming World Boston events in this series and for this week, there is one more this week, at the end of this program. And of course, it's all available at our website, worldboston.org. We are inviting you to join us in a range of virtual activities designed to help keep us all internationally engaged. And we hope you'll join us, and if you can, that you'll support us too. In terms of housekeeping today, everyone but the speakers will be muted, especially while our hosts are cooking. However, we welcome you to turn on your videos. We are creating an informal and fun cultural exchange experience here. We also recommend that if you want to see all the videos at once, click gallery mm -hmm. view in the upper right hand corner. We are asking all questions to be put into the chat box where my colleague Josh Bruno, Manager of Citizen Diplomacy Programs, will be helping answer. If you would rather ask your question directly, you can use the raise hand function and I will unmute you when it's appropriate during the cooking demonstration and you can ask your question aloud. We are recording and we will be sending the recording on YouTube in an email follow-up Feel free to visit our YouTube channel to see all of the recordings of this series, as well as some of our world, other World Boston events. We do ask for your patience today, as our hosts have warned us that the situation is such that their power may be suddenly turned off. Hopefully, that will not happen during this event, as mornings do tend to be luckier. But if it does happen, we'll have to end the event, as it's too tricky to move a cooking demonstration to another venue. And now I'd like to get to today's program. If you joined us last week with Arturo and his wife, you may know some of the background already. Please excuse me while I bring some of our up to speed for just a couple minutes. As you may know, World Boston typically hosts about 800 international leaders in our greater Boston community each year, designing and implementing professional exchanges for them. Understandably, these programs are on hold at the moment, at least through September. We had the pleasure of hosting Arturo Riera through a U.S. State Department sponsored professional exchange program, Young Leaders of the Americas Initiative, or YLI for short. We hosted 12 young entrepreneurs from across Latin America and the Caribbean in fall 2018. I see a couple other alumni here attending this event in support. It's great to see you again. Like last week, I see some of the DC-based programmers who managed YLI 2018 are on this call from Meridian International Center. And also like last week, we again have some folks from the DC-based organization IREX who are managing the upcoming YLI program in 2021, which is rescheduled from this year, of which World Boston will be a part. Welcome to you all as well. Arturo came to Boston in September and October 2018 and completed a fellowship placement at the Community Music Center of Boston, where he worked alongside Chief Programming Officer Morgan Bickford. Outside of the fellowship, World Boston also organized cultural experiences, which included a duck boat tour, a day in Plymouth, America's hometown, 
a visit to the Salem Witch Museum, shown here in the photo. Also shown is a photo from a meeting with local Congressman Joseph Kennedy III, who has an affinity for Latin America and spent lunch with our YLI cohort in support of their federally funded program. Our Twitter also was invited to dinner by one of our dinner diplomats for an evening of informal conversation over a meal, an opportunity for him to learn more about local culture. That dinner diplomat, Leslie Griffin, also a World Boston board member, is joining us here again today. Thank you for joining, Leslie. Arturo and his wife are returning your act of service today and welcoming all of us into their kitchen. More about Arturo's background. Arturo is the founder of Pasitos Sinfonicos, a music academy that offers new ways to learn music for children and families. Pasitos Sinfonicos offers music stimulation for pregnant mothers and babies, as well as music theory and instrument instruction for children. Arturo has played percussion with Lara Symphonic Orchestra, as well as performed as a soloist with this orchestra and Coro Symphonic Orchestra. He has also taught percussion and holds a master's degree in education. Currently, he is finishing his master's degree in percussion. As Arturo and his wife take it away in their kitchen in Barquisimeto, Venezuela, for the next 45 minutes, I want to remind those of you who have recently joined the call that we are keeping participants' mics muted but videos on to promote more social interaction during an informal, fun, cultural exchange event. Please do feel free to turn your video on. As you have questions about the Venezuelan dishes being cooked or about Venezuelan culture, the current public health or economic situation in Venezuela, we ask you to write it in the chat box and I will read it for you at an appropriate time during the demonstration. Alternatively, you can raise your hand and I will try to call on you at an appropriate time. We will be asking Arturo and Yahaira questions during the cooking demonstration of three recipes, pabellon criollo, arepas rellenas, papelon con limon, a beverage. My colleague Josh will be typing the steps into the chat box. If you miss anything, don't worry. We will be sharing a recording on YouTube after the event concludes and sending the written recipes that you see here on the screen in our follow-up email. In particular, we ask again that everyone please be patient with the transcontinental connection here on Zoom. If we do lose connection, we'll have to end the event as it'll be too difficult to move a cooking demonstration to another venue. We do apologize in advance if that happens. All right, Arturo, over to you now. So hello, everybody. Uh, here is, uh, my name is Artur Riera, and she is Gahaira. We are very honored to be today here cooking for you. Uh, we're having uh, two traditional dishes from Venezuela and a special beverage that is uh, uh, also traditional from our country. So let's get started today with some uh, in, uh, with uh, ingredients that we are going to use. And I'm gonna be telling you a little bit of the history of this dish. We are going to start to prepare El Pabellón Criollo, okay? This is a, a very, very old uh, dish that uh, is about the 1600, uh, 16, 16, 000, 16th century, okay? So if this is a, like a, a slave, a dish. It's uh, based on almost the, the preparation or the dinner of the masters. So the slaves just take away the, the rest of the food. I mean, if the, they get like extra meat, so they have it for their meat, for their meal, uh, an extra rice, so they put it in the dish, an extra black beans, so they put it Dish. So it's a, it's a mixture of cultures, of course, because we have um, like the, the slave people uh, combining all these uh, several uh, foods that the white people that were their owners uh, used to it. So this is a very uh, cultural dish. Uh, well, it's 
on uh, the the pabellón criollo is formed uh, basically with shredded uh, meat that is a, a very soft meat that you can uh, like disband or make like threads. I have it right here. Okay, this is a shredded meat. Uh, you have to cook it. Uh, you put it in water. So you boil it with a bit of salt and you put some onions and bell pepper so you can have a very tasty uh, uh, and soft uh, taste and this is uh, a small piece that i get here so you can see how you can shred it okay this is the way you you do it so you can have the meat this way this is like the first part of the preparation uh, we did it already because uh, you have to cook it almost for an hour or until the meat is soft, okay? It's very, very tender, as you see. You can uh, put it or chop it with your fingers and it's very, very delicious. We also put it a little bit of garlic, okay? And that's it. You boil the meat and then you cook it with your fingers. Uh, for the next part of the preparation of the shredded meat, we will use a uh, sofrito, okay? Uh, sofrito, it's a, a condiment preparation that we use for almost every, uh, everything, okay? We can have sofrito for the meat, we can have sofrito for eggs, for chicken, uh, even for fishes, okay? So the sofrito is uh, uh, a very common preparation for all Venezuelan people, okay? Um, I have here done and ready a sofrito because as we use it a lot, we, we, we cook it and we reserve it in our fridge, okay? So there is... Uh, we have uh, done a, a, a glass of sofrito, but today we're going to prepare it, and it's very, very easy, okay? Yahaira is looking for the hot pan and put it in the stove, okay? You have to add a vegetable oil, and then you have to add uh, onions, chop it very, very tiny, tiny, okay? Uh, in squares, uh, I will move a bit the camera over there so you can see Yahaira and you have to put it in the preparation so onions, uh, bell peppers, uh, green bell peppers and red bell peppers that's great for, for a, a good taste uh, and we have a, a small sweet bell peppers okay these ones over here okay and these uh, sweet bell peppers we call it Aji dulce, okay? So, uh, the aji dulce or the sweet bell peppers uh, is not uh, hot at all, so it's a sweet preparation. So, you can uh, cut it in a small pieces, in a small squares, and add it to the sofrito, okay? You also put a little bit of garlic, uh, chop it in small pieces, and that's it. The sofrito is that. Vegetable oil, onions, chopped, uh, garlic, bell peppers, and a little bit of sweet bell peppers, little sweet bell peppers, that is aji dulce, okay? I will move the camera a bit so you can see the preparation over there. Yahaira is putting in the pan all these uh, ingredients. Mm -hmm. Next one. Great. You also can add another uh, green ingredient, like leek or maybe um, coriander, but uh, it's not very useful to, to have coriander. So, um, they, I'm, I'm reading here the chat box, so the, the equivalent of the ají dulce, it's a, uh, you can use green bell peppers, okay? Uh, it has a very soft taste and it gives the sofrito a very special uh, taste. Okay. 
While the sofrito is cooking, we are going to prepare the arepas. That is another part of our dishes, okay? I will reserve this over here. Arepa, the arepas is a very common uh, preparation for our, uh, us, the Venezuelan people, and it's made of corn flour. You can find it uh, there in Boston. I, I think I bought uh, when I was there, and I prepared for uh, my, my fellows uh, a dinner with arepas and empanadas. But this is like the common brand that is called pan, okay? Uh, but you can uh, have any other brand of uh, corn flour, okay? What, how is the preparation? It's very easy. You just uh, mix the corn flour with water and a bit of salt, and you have to uh, scratch it with your hand, okay? Move it with your hand until you have a mask, okay? And that's it. Then you will make a small uh, spheres or circles and and smash it with your hands and put it in the pan. <laughs> okay. As you see, you have to use your hand and until the the preparation is uh, all in, integrated, okay, or blended. You have to okay, you have to blend it. It has to be soft, and you can have you can handle it with your with your own hand. It may be you can have it like sandy uh, texture. If it is that way, you have to put a little more of water, okay, until the preparation is really really blended. <laughs> Okay, the other part of the pabellón criollo, yeah, is telling me that uh, continue speaking, meanwhile she finishes the arepas, is the black beans, okay? Uh, the black beans is a very common plate for all of us. Uh, we prepare it uh, from zero. I mean, we have the black beans in, in, in packs. Um, we put it in water for one day, maybe from one day to another day. So you put it in water and, and reserve it in your fridge. And uh, the next day you cook it. Just, just put it, uh, th those beans will absorb all the water and will grow a little bit. So you put all these grown beans in a hot pan with water and uh, you can add onions and garlic and we use cumin okay this is a, a very special condiment that we use with the black beans and um, and then you have you, you only let it boil for maybe 45 minutes or one hour that's the the range of time or until the beans is soft okay yeah. you can also buy it in can uh, when I was in Boston in 2018, I bought black beans in can and it comes just ready. So you can buy it that way. And for the pabellón criollo, we have to do another preparation over the black beans. When you have it done, you put it in a hot pan with vegetable oil and you fry it a little bit. So and put it like a, a paste without liquid, okay? Uh, it has to, to become a pasty, okay, very, um, yeah, like not not water, like, okay. Yeah, is showing us the sofrito, she's bringing here. I cannot move uh, the camera a lot, but here it is, the sofrito, look, it looks wonderful and it smells amazing. Look at the color, you have the bell pepper, we use red bell peppers, and the onion and the garlic and the leek, uh, everything mixed with oil, okay? Of course I'm reading again your, the chat box, the reina pepiada, we are cooking today reina pepiada in the next recipe, if the time uh, it, 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 it's good with us. I think we, we can do it, okay? The arepas, let's get back to the arepas. Look, the, the preparation is all done, it's ready. So now we, we're doing circles with the 
a preparation and smash it with the hand. So we can do these circles. It's very, very easy. We, we used to eat um, arepas for breakfast. We used to eat arepas for lunchtime. And we used to eat arepas for dinner. So arepa is a, a big the, and traditional uh, dish here in Venezuela. We use it for almost everything, OK? So you will see a little bit of reina papilla later here in the, in, in the video. OK, I don't know if you can see over there is our stove. And Yahaira is putting the arepas just in a special pan that we have for cooking the arepas. We use this pan only for cooking arepas. But you can use uh, whatever you, you want, uh, whatever pan you have. The special pan that we have here in Venezuela is called budare, OK? The budare is this. Uh, it's an iron pan, made pan, OK, where we cook the arepa, OK? Over there, Yahaira has the black beans being cooked, OK, and being reduced so they won't be liquid. They will be uh, like a very, very gross, OK? Uh, oh. I forgot how to say that. Not liquid, okay? More uh, like a cream, okay? More dry, like a cream. In, in, in liquid, okay? Okay. Yahaira is telling me that maybe some of you will, will think that the black beans, we, we should blend it. No, we don't blend it. We just cook it until the all the water evaporates and it gets like a, a, a cream of black beans, okay? The next step of the cooking is the tahadas, okay? And I, I had to investigate a lot of this because I didn't know how to explain very well the platano, and what is the platano for you? I have here uh, a platano, I have found that it's called plantain. Uh, it's a big banana, but it, it, it is not as sweet as the banana is. Uh, we use it uh, for a lot of dishes here in Venezuela, okay? Uh, what do we are we gonna do? We're gonna uh, chop it, but in large pieces, okay? And in slices, really. We're gonna keep quick, let me look for a knife, okay? And I will show you, okay? This is our platano or plantain. You just remove the edges. We, keep, we remove the skin in this way. Look, it just removed so easily when they are in this color yellow. We, you, you will find plantains yellow and uh, green. And this is it. So now we're gonna have, uh, yes, like a grow of plain change, something like that. In Spanish, is Maduro, co, okay? Uh, and we don't like to say that name. So if, if we start talking about uh, Maduro, we will finish talking about politics, and that's not good at all. Well, let me look for a flame, and we're we're gonna uh, do some slices of plantains, okay, this way. You cut it, okay, you will have these beautiful slices of platano. And then you will fry it with vegetable oil. That's it. It's very, very, very easy. And we use it almost in all of our lunch, okay? Well, for breakfast, we use it too, with uh, shredded cheese, with fresh cheese, uh, tajadas with butter, and fresh cheese is very, very delicious. Okay, I will make a, a couple more. As I told you, the pabellón criollo is a very uh, complete dish because it has almost everything. 
uh, it has the, the shredded meat, it has um, the tajadas, it has black beans, and of course, the arepas, okay? And of, there's many, many options that you can add to the pabellón criollo. Uh, you can add uh, avocado. We, we like the avocado, so we are going to add some avocado in our dish. And you can add also a fried egg, okay? It's used mostly to decorate the, the plate but it also add another flavor, okay? But very, very tasty. It's very heavy meat, a uh, very heavy meal, and we use it for lunch. Uh, I was telling Josh before we connect here that our main meal of the day is the lunch time. So uh, as you see, there is, there is a heavy preparation here for lunch. Uh, it's very opposite as I I live there in in, in Boston where the, the lunch is very light there. So you, you can use a sandwich for lunch and it's okay. For us, the Venezuelan people, our lunch is like our be best uh, meal of the day, our basic meal of the day, as your dinner is. Okay, let's put it this in the hot pan with vegetable oil and fry it. I will try to move a little bit the camera so you can see. Here it is. We are putting in the hot pan with vegetable oil. Mm. And this is the black beans. As I told you, they, are, they have to be like a cream, very, very dry, okay? And the arepas, you have to put it in the hot pan until they become golden, okay? They will make a... Uh, a crust, a crispy skin, okay? And it has to be in that color that is a brown and golden color, beautiful, beautiful color. The smells here in the kitchen is amazing. Okay, okay. Now I'm gonna chop the avocado right here. Let me look for another knife. Okay, the same, exactly the same preparation. Okay, we just open the avocado. Look how tasty is this avocado, very fresh. We remove the centerpiece. Okay, very carefully. And you have to remove the skin as well. I will chop some slices this way. And I will quit the skin this way. There are some avocados that doesn't allow us to remove the skin with our hands. So we can use, we can help us with an eye. It is pretty, pretty easy to do it. And there you are. Very tasty avocado. Let me try if I can tweet it. No, no, no. But it's okay. We can use the knife. We can use the knife this way. And that's it. We have a beautiful slices of avocado, okay? We're almost done with the preparation of the pabellón criollo. As you see, it's a very, very easy dish to prepare since everything is preparated with an anticipation, okay? I don't know if you have any question until this. Sara, or Josh, what do you say to us? We are waiting for some preparation to be done. Hi, Arturo. Thank you so much. We do have one question from the very beginning that 
someone was just wondering what kind of meat do you use? Well, we use like a soft part of the cow. Uh, I have investigated. It's called like um, uh, meat meat. We call it a uh, falda here in Venezuela. I don't know what is exactly the name of the part of the cow that you will use to to have this meat in this way. So. Maybe loaf meat could be uh, useful. You have to choose a uh, meat that is tender, that you can boil and you can shred it with your own hands. So uh, I don't know if you, if you know uh, any kind of meat over there or, or a part of the, of the cow that you can do this, Sarah or Josh. Uh, yes, possibly like a shoulder um, would be able to be cooked and made a bit more tender so you could shred it like you showed us the bowl of shredded meat. Thank you. I was also wondering, cool, um, <laughs> I was also wondering, just given the pandemic at the moment, where are you getting your groceries like the avocado that you were showing us and the plantain? Are you going to supermarkets or are you getting them from more local places near to your home? Well, we, we go to local places nearby our home. And of course the supermarkets are open here until 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So you can go out in the morning, uh, of course, with all the preparation. We use the, these uh, uh, masks okay and gloves so we go out with very uh, with a lot of uh, warnings uh, we try to know get uh, ill okay with the, the the situation but in venezuela the the, the coronavirus is not uh, like spread in all the, the, the territory uh, here in our state we only have like 40 cases and it's, well, and it's totally controlled uh, since we know uh, that is some people that live here in Marquisimeto, but they are traveling outside the country and coming back. And when they get into the country, the authorities just put them away in quarantine, okay? And they stay there until they become uh, healthier or uh, whatever else um, happens. I mean, uh, we have a couple uh, of cases that the people just passed away, uh, but the other are just recovering. And well, this is uh, like uh, our situation here with the COVID or the coronavirus, okay? Uh, Okay, Yahaira is telling me that the black beans are ready. Look how gorgeous they look. Okay, they are a creamy black beans. Okay, Seca. very, very dry, and that's it. Okay, and right now we are gonna prepare the shredded meat. Okay, here it is, the shredded meat prepared, and we're gonna fry it in a hot pan with vegetable oil and the sofrito. I will try to go with the camera. There it is. As you see, Yahaira is putting all the sofrito inside our hot pan. Gorgeous colors. And we're gonna put the shredded meat over there. It smells so, so tasty. I would love you to, to have this smell around you. And my mouth is just going liquid right now. <laughs> okay, you have to remove uh, and move with the uh, we recommend you to use the wooden spoon, okay? 
and until the all the ingredients are integrated okay like this it's a very dry meat when you do it this way but then you will add some tomatoes okay you can uh, you can have diced tomatoes uh, or shredded tomatoes of course we use salt and pepper a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, black pepper. If you do it in this way, it's very, very tasty, okay? After that, we are gonna integrate the tomatoes. Yahaira prepare it uh, sooner, so there is uh, like tomatoes, shredded or grated, I really don't know how to say that in English, but as you see, it's like a paste of tomato, okay? Uh, you, you take the tomato and you shred it with a, a iron shredder. With this, okay, you, you just pass the tomato over here and it gets until there. If you don't have this instrument, you can only buy a can of diced tomatoes and add it to the shredded meat preparation, okay? We will add uh, some tomato paste, okay? In a, in a can, of course. Oh, this is diced tomatoes. Okay, yeah, they is adding more diced tomatoes. Wow. <laughs> this can opener is new and we are learning how to use it. Okay. You can prepare it both ways, as you see, with shredded tomatoes or with tomatoes in a can. Both uh, ways, it's okay. Yahara is telling me that she's using in dice, tomatoes in dices, because she likes to feel the, the dices of tomatoes when she eats it. Okay, this is laurel, uh, Italian condiment, okay? And paprika, a little bit of paprika powder. So you can have more color and a smell really, really great. The arepas is being cooked. It, they are almost done, okay? And right now we are gonna build the plate. Of course, we miss the fried egg. That is the last part because we like to eat it very, very hot. Okay, Yahair is telling me you have to be careful with the salt as you are adding several ingredients. So you must check the salt uh, a bit when finishing the, <laughs> the, the shredded meat. Over there, she's cooking the plantains, okay, or the bananas frying the plantains. Look how gorgeous they see, okay? They have a golden uh, color, beautiful, and it smells so, so good. And right now we are finishing frying the egg and we're gonna make the plate, okay? I will put here, and I will be serving the plates, okay? So I will present it in a beautiful plate. Now I will put the rice. It has to be very white. So as I told you before, this is like the, the part of, in history of the dish that is for the owners of the plantations, okay? If there, they was 
they were uh, Spanish people, open, gay, white people. So their rights symbolize their culture. This dish is a beautiful, look at this, a tower. I just made the tower, putting the rice in a cup of coffee and put it upside down. And you will have a rice tower, okay? This is just a, like a, oh, it just fell down, but it's okay. Uh, it looks beautiful when you have the, the plate mounted all over and you can do it like like upside down, okay? Now we're going to put the black beans. Okay, I'm looking for the black beans. And we are going to put maybe one or two spoons this way. This is for one person, okay? You can you can have it for more person. But it's usually put it for one person. Okay, now we're putting the avocado right here. Okay, a slice of avocado. Then we're gonna put the Shredded meat, here it is, okay? Wow, this is so, so beautiful. Look at this. We put our shredded meat. Dun, 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 dun. I hope I go back to Boston and maybe prepare this dish for all of you, especially for Leslie, who was my uh, dinner diplomacy uh, fellow when I was in Boston. So Leslie, this is especially for you. We only need for finish the, the, this dish. We need to. Uh, we're waiting to the egg, the fried egg, and the plantains. That's all what uh, we need to put in this dish. So mean, meanwhile, this is done. I will prepare the papelon con limon. That is our beverage for today. Papelon is a bar of sugar cane, as you see it here, okay? The condensed sugar cane. So this is very, very sweet. And there is two ways to do the papelon con limon. You can shred it with the iron shredder or you can put it in water. I put it, I love to do it this way with water. So I have this jar, so with a uh, prepare of papelon, what do you have to do? Take the bar and put it with fresh water, okay? Fresh water. And you put it in your fridge and that's it. You will have a concentrated a papelon beverage. It is concentrated. What we are we going to do right now? We're gonna have another jar. Okay. Let me show you. We're gonna have another jar. We're gonna put a little bit of this papelon concentrated. Maybe uh, two or three fingers of the jar. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna put lemon, lemon juice. Okay, you just have to put the lemon this way. A lot of lemon, I like to taste with a lot of lemon. And put the lemon juice in the jar this way, okay? How can you do it in your home? If you can find the papelon there, you can use brown sugar, okay? Do you have some questions now?
Yes, Arturo, we have a couple great questions about Venezuelan cuisine. People are wondering if you know of any, okay. any influence on Venezuelan cuisine from other communities in Venezuela, um, such as the Lebanese diaspora in Venezuela, or perhaps Venezuelan cooking might be influenced by other countries around Venezuela. Could you tell us a little bit about influences on Venezuelan cuisine, please? Of course, we have influence of Venezuelan uh, cuisine of uh, several cultures. For Lebanese people who are living here, uh, we have all the spices uh, and we use it in our food. As you see, we use cumin in the shredded meat and we use a lot of paprika and other uh, spices that are Arabian spices in our dishes. And we have uh, influence by several uh, communities around us. I mean, in the coastside, we have plenty of dishes made of uh, fish that is from the Caribbean people. Uh, um, as I, uh, I have to, to tell you or to remember uh, that Venezuela is, it was a Spanish colony. So we have a lot of Spanish influence too in our dishes, in our music, in our culture, in every, every uh, way, okay? So the Spanish cuisine and the Venezuelan uh, cuisine, it's, uh, it's like a fusion uh, at this point, okay? Uh, the Colombian cuisine is very similar to us. Uh, even when, when, we, when I was investigating about the arepas, uh, the Colombian people say that the arepa is from Colombia and the arepa is from Venezuela. Even Mexican uh, arepa that they call uh, rellenita, okay? That it, it's like a toast, a Mexican toast or, yeah, a Mexican toast that is uh, full and it, it, it's arepa, it's really arepa. Well, let's see, Yahaira, when, meanwhile, I was telling you how about this uh, beautiful question. She put the plantains around the dish and the fried egg right here. What are we missing in this plate? We're missing the fresh cheese, okay? Yahaira is coming with the fresh cheese. It's a white cheese made here in Venezuela, and we put it you can put it like arabota with the black beans as some people put it over the plantains but well you can use it anyway and this is the finished plate of the pabellón criollo uh, with arepa we, we use arepa almost in every dish so there it is our famous pabellón criollo it's very very easy to cook so um, I invite you to prepare it there at your homes. Well, the papelón con limón is almost done. Uh, I, I have to remember, we use a bit of papelón concentrated. Then we put some lemon juice. And to finish, we add fresh water, OK? A lot of fresh water. It has this gorgeous golden color. And to drink it, you have to add some ice, okay? And we drink it very, very uh, cold. And it's Someone delicious. Uh, it's a tea, okay? It's like a tea, uh, and it is refreshing. You, we, have, uh, we live in a region that is very hot, so this uh, beverage is especially for hot days. Oh. This is a nice. And that's it. You can uh, put some uh, slices of lemon for decoration, okay? I will try to put it aside. You can put a slice of lemon. You open a bit and you can put it in the jar this way. You can also have a small slices and put it inside the preparation.
Arturo, we have one question about the ingredients, about the cheese that you mentioned. What kind of cheese do you recommend? We're wondering if there's a good substitute here in Boston for the cheese that you used. Well, you can use fresh cheese. I, when I was there, I didn't find any um, fresh cheese, but maybe you can use um, any white cheese that you can find there, uh, it has to be a, like a strong uh, consistency, okay? So you can shred it, or you can use a slice, uh, a couple of slices of cheese, the, the one that you can find there. <laughs> Yahaira is looking for some cheese here, okay? Oh, amazing, this preparation. This is a fresh cheese that we have here, okay? You, it has to be very firm, very strong, not so salty, okay? And you, we, we, we shred it with the iron shredder. But you can also slice it and put it out to join the dish. Well, this is our main dish, and we have, we also are going to prepare arepas rellenas. It's uh, arepas with fillings. Um, this is uh, very practical for us because if we do for lunch the pabellón criollo, then for dinner we do arepas rellenas with all of the ingredients that uh, we didn't add at the lunch. So. And we are gonna know that here in Venezuela we are so funny, and we have to we have put uh, these arepas uh, with filling some funny names, okay? And it has some history. Uh, there is a, a one arepa that is famous. It's called the Reina Pepiada, okay? This is arepa. This is an arepa filled with uh, chicken, avocado, and uh, peas. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna do put some sofrito in the hot pan with vegetable oil, chicken, smash it. You, you have to put to, uh, to like a breast, a chicken breast uh, until it's tender and then you uh, shred with your hands. You can also get it, can get it from a can. There are breast chicken in cans. So you just have to shred it with your head, okay? Then, yeah, I put, it, put you yourself this way so they can see it. You have to mix it, that's it. This is the chicken breast. And you put some cheese, okay? Green cheese. <coughs> Avocado. Okay, avocado chopped very, very small, or you can smash it as well, okay? This is our version of this dish, and it's very easy to do. You can have reina pepiada tonight at dinner, if you want to. You can, you have to buy a can of breast, chicken breast, uh, some green peas and avocado, that's it. Oh, the Haida is changing the dish, okay? Because it, it gets a lot of ingredients. So you can see, that's it. Then, how are we going to mix it? We're going to use a spoon or maybe a fork. Porque no usa el you can use it with a fork and you smash it and add a little bit of mayo. We are having a dulce that is the sweet bell pepper. You can use green bell pepper and onion and garlic. And to finish the preparation, add some coriander, very, chop it very, very small, okay? All of this, you mix it, and that's, that's it. 
Okay, we're gonna have at the mayo, salt and pepper. Always don't don't forgive. Don't forgive to to add salt and pepper. A lot of mayo. La cantidad es de acuerdo como le gusta. Okay. The quantity of the ingredients is proportionate of how many arepas would you like to do. So this is like one chicken breast complete, um, a couple of slices of avocado, and the other ingredients is the onion, a very little uh, piece of onion, uh, maybe two pieces of garlic, and uh, some leaves of coriander. Okay? La ventaja de los ingredientes o de las preparaciones mexicanas o una particularidad es que cada quien las prepara como más le gusta. Eh, es, así es como preparamos nosotros en este caso. Hay las preparaciones base de todos los platos, sin embargo, cada familia tradicionalmente le, le, le realiza, le coloca las cosas que más le gustan y en la cantidad que más le gusta. Ok, ya eres telling me that uh, we have to remember that every family do the, these recipes as they love to do it. Maybe you will find some recipes of reina pepiada when they add another ingredient. And this is a, like a variant of the main recipe. But uh, I can in, in very uh, common sense, or, or like uh, the, the central part of the recipe is this way, okay? Yahaira is gonna taste it. So you, she can check the salt. She says it's divine. <laughs> I have my mouth full of saliva. <laughs> okay, right now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna fill some arepas, okay? Here we are, the arepas. It's very easy, you just open it with a knife, okay? This way. There are some people who put it butter. I will find for it. You can add butter. Okay, we add some butter. It's very, very beautiful. And then we add the Reina Pepiada filling. This has a funny story. I will tell you very quick. Uh, the Reina Pepiada, it's called this way. Oh my God, look at this. Wow, it just looks amazing. The story of the Reina Pepiada is uh, back to the 1950 when Susana Green was Miss uh, Venezuela, who won the Miss World contest, and there was a um, arepa store in Caracas, in, in Sabana Grande, that is a, a place in Caracas, that is our capital city, and they want to celebrate the, the winning of Susana Duin in this contest, and they prepare this arepa, okay? And the curious fact is that the father of Susana Duin go or went to that uh, arepa store uh, days after the contest, and um, the the arepa store had like a marketing promotion where they put an, uh, one of their owner's do daughter uh, dressed like a miss uh, outside the store uh, promoting the arepa. The arepa was called La Reina, the Queen. And when the father of Susana Duin goes to this arepa store, uh, he was just uh, amazed. By this, so he go uh, and talk to the owner and say, "Hey, I'm the father of Susana Dwin, and I'm gonna bring her here so you, she can eat your arepa." The, that day, uh, Susana Dwin went to the arepa store and try the the this uh, combination of chicken with avocado and peas, and she loved it. So they named the arepa La, La Reina because of Susana Dwin and the pepiada, it's a, a term 
of the 1950 years here of Venezuela and say uh, women that is very voluptuous so very uh, beautiful with curves okay so a pepiada is a woman with curves uh, and this is the complete name of the reina pepiada because of Susana Wynn who was a curvy uh, girl of, of course the winner of the Miss Universe this is another arepa look we are using now the black beans and white cheese this is called domino and domino is a table uh, a desk a board game that we have here in venezuela very very uh, famous i'm talking a lot if you have any question please let me know hi arturo we are almost out of time here um but really quickly someone did ask if when you were in boston you found a restaurant or cafe of venezuelan food that you might recommend no i didn't find any restaurant of venezuelan food over there i was looking for one but no i didn't it's a good uh, entrepreneur idea so maybe we can move to boston and open a venezuelan restaurant over there <laughs> it sounds okay good. we're finishing the dishes great we're finishing the dishes this is the other arepa with filling that is, this is called um, la pelua the <laughs> haiti arepa because the name is because you use shredded meat and it seems to be uh hair and yellow cheese or oh, this is um, okay, so, uh, it may be gouda cheese, okay, uh, shredded. And this is the other plate. Look how wonderful it looks. Wow, it looks amazing. And uh, uh, Jair is telling me that the Arepa by themselves, uh, they call the widow, la viuda. <laughs> okay, and that's it. Well, I hope you enjoyed today our preparation. I hope you like and you dare to prepare it in your very own homes. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you for uh, uh, having us today here. And yeah, I'm reading that you are all hungry. So go and prepare your arepas and prepare your pollo criollo and drink a lot of papelón con limón and have a good time. So, Sara, any other questions? Thank you, Arturo. No, I think we've run out of time for questions, but people are saying it looks delicious, it looks beautiful, and I agree with some of the folks who have been saying that now we're all going to be hungry. So I'm sure people will be trying to make this dish soon. <laughs> and we thank you so much for inviting me to your home. Really appreciate it. It was a very heartwarming and cheerful way to spend time together. So thank you so much to you and Yahaira again. We really do appreciate it. And thank you to all of you who tuned in today. We appreciate your own call to citizen diplomacy during this challenging time and hope you will continue to tune into our virtual webinar series. As you already know, we are running our virtual series typically on Tuesdays. We will have more opportunities coming up this month before we pivot a bit for the summer months. Next Tuesday, we will be featuring a panel of IVLP alumni journalists from across Africa in a discussion on COVID-19 responses in their countries. Registration will be open tomorrow on our website. Also, next week, on the other side of programming at World Boston, we have our first virtual chat and chowder event on Thursday the 18th in partnership with the WGBH Forum Network. It had to be rescheduled from last week, but even virtually, the spirit of chat and chowder persists. You can find the registration on our website, including the biography of the speaker, who is Dr. John Gans, and he will discuss the National Security Council. Still this week, we have another event on the other side of programming at World Boston again, our fourth and final online world affairs trivia competition. It is at 6 p.m. this Thursday. The trivia is global 
but the theme of conversation is a vacation destination. And this week is the beach because it's finally that time of year here. This is the last opportunity to participate and registration is also open on our website. Please stay tuned for event announcements on our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and sign up for our newsletters to stay informed of these opportunities. If you haven't already, you can do so on our website. Your friends at World Boston wish you all to remain in good health and in good spirits. Take good care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Arturo and Yahira. <laughs>